It's I don't know. It's just fun. <laughs> oh, that's all I got. The wrestling life. Hey everybody, it's the Wrestling Life. It's episode 374. It is a double pay-per-view weekend preview episode. I'm Ethan. Welcome back, Crab fans. I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. It is, as mentioned, a double pay-per-view weekend. It's WWE on Saturday with King and Queen of the Ring. And then it's AEW on Sunday with their fifth anniversary show, Double or Nothing. Or as Vince McMahon would have called it, the sixth anniversary show. (laughs) Double or Nothing. And uh, just big picture... Are you excited for uh, a lot of wrestling this weekend? Eh. (laughs) I see. No. (laughs) Um, I mean, I think there will be good stuff on both shows. Um, I think I'm getting together with a friend to watch the AEW show on Sunday evening since there's a a holiday here in the States on on Monday. We uh, We can afford to stay up till midnight to to watch the show uh, is without... this the legendary benny omega that is that's, that's what do you uh, know about that? ben lives in the woods somewhere in pennsylvania and uh and uh, he buys the shows and i drive up and usually buy dinner and it's a, it's a lovely time but uh so i'm looking forward to you know hanging out with my friend and and watching the show uh and uh, I'm sure I'm just, like there will be good things on both shows. I'm sure, but overall, I don't think the uh, the creative cylinders are firing in uh, either company. At least not to my liking right now. You know, I just in I uh, I live my life one hundred hours at a time, and um. There is a one hundred hour stretch this week between Wednesday night at eight PM Eastern when Dynamite starts and Sunday night at midnight. That's about a one hundred hour stretch. And in those one hundred hours, there will be about eleven and a half to twelve hours of Tony Khan booked wrestling shows to watch. Between mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. between Dynamite Ring of Honor, Rampage, Collision, and his five-hour pay-per-view on Sunday. That is far too much product. I don't need a five-hour pay-per-view every month. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't. No, I mean, I, I, I don't think anybody is looking to, especially not ones that you have to pay $50 for. I mean, we haven't seen those pay-per-view numbers greatly suffer as of yet that's Um, true but one would think i it's going to happen either because eventually people will not feel that every show is worth spending the 50 dollars on or if and when they are able to negotiate whatever their next rights deal is you everyone seems to think that the the pay-per-views will be given to us given to max or whatever streaming service if and when they if they stay with warner brothers so uh either way it feels like maybe this is this is a tough ass but to me it's like yes it's a lot of uh hours of television and hours of pay-per-view but also it's a lot to ask you know a very loyal audience though they clearly are to keep plugging down $50 $50 every single month to uh, buy a show or 10 months a year, whatever it ends up being right now. Well, I'll be back to uh, crap on AEW some more here a little bit later in the show, but we can 
start by uh, discussing the larger international wrestling promotion that has paper this weekend in the wonderful progressive uh, kingdom of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> WWE King and Queen of the Ring. Um, this should be about a three hour show, which uh, there's only five matches on it, so it could probably be much shorter. But uh, we have to have our our uh, commercials and our just a wonderful variety show uh, mm-hmm. presented by presented by uh, Quiznos or you know I think Quiznos is out but going out of business this year. Um, Boston Market, I think Boston Market's going out of business this year. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you you get the point. Uh, so the finals of the Queen of the Ring tournament will be on that program, and uh, this show. As is tradition, uh, kicks off at one p.m. Eastern is the uh, main card on uh, Saturday, mm-hmm. and then or no noon Eastern, noon Eastern. So pre-show probably eleven thirty a.m. Eastern. Um, yeah. So the Queen of the Rank Finals are on the show, and it will be Lyra Valkyria versus. The winner of the SmackDown bracket, which will be either uh, Bianca Belair or Nia Jax. Um, so this is King and Queen of the Ring uh, gimmick usually works better if it's a heel. But uh, we'll see what they do here. Nia and Bianca on the finals of the SmackDown bracket. Did you see the wonderful finish they did in uh, Nia Jax versus Jay Cargill last week on SmackDown? Oh, it was in fact wonderful. They're really like uh, Batisting, <laughs> like 2004 Batisting Jade, huh? Like we don't trust her to do a lot, but they're sure as hell going to protect her. <laughs> yes, there is that. They did that with Dave Forever, though, and then it's like, hey, what do you know? Dave knows how to work. Yeah, that, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> But uh, all of a sudden, it's like, hey, man, Dave was working with Edge and uh, Undertaker every month. And uh turns out he learns how to work. So what do you know about that? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we'll see about the, uh, Nia and Jade here. They did, did one of the worst finishes of all time. The uh, hogan Andre double DQ finish where they both used the chair from WrestleMania 4. <laughs> uh, they did that finish on SmackDown last week with Nia and Jade. And uh, Jade took her first WWE loss. By disqualification. Just just bad. Just real bad. But uh, Lyra and uh, EO Sky were out there on Raw this week. And uh, Wikipedia says they went 19 minutes and 15 seconds. And I think that um, it felt much longer than that. They just sent these two people who are not particularly over out there. And were like, all right, keep wrestling. And they're like, well, what if we're not getting a reaction? And they're like, well... Just keep wrestling until you do. And they're like, well, I, what if we, but what if we don't get a reaction? Well, just keep wrestling until you do. So, anyway, I like EO, I like Lyra. And uh, on the other side, we have Nia and Bianca. And uh, we'll see, uh, we'll see how this plays out on Saturday. Any, um, any, um, what do you think about WWE basically devoting a month of their television? to two tournaments and uh what do you think of the execution of these tournaments and uh what do you think of uh the potential final here which i'm assuming is going to be lyra versus naya um i mean as far as WWE just taking a month off and doing a tournament i'm fine with that because it is an excuse just to have a bunch of good simple television matches at least in theory uh terrible finishes and in the Naya match notwithstanding. Uh, so I think that's fine. Um, they decided like today, as of when we were recording this, to be like, oh, by the way, the winners are getting world title shots at SummerSlam. Yes. Um, perhaps they could have announced that at the start of this, and then the tournament would have felt a little bit more important as it was going on. But yeah, overall, I think it's... It, it's been it's been very easy to watch like it's it's i don't think they've lit the world on fire and it's tough to do a very wrestling forward show in front of a crowd that wrestling is the least the thing they're interested in the <laughs> least at when they come to a wwe show it seems 
They they want to say yeet. <laughs> yes, they they want to sing along and they want to see entrances and and hear catchphrases and that's fine. But when you then give them a bunch of a succession of simple wrestling matches, yes. uh, there's a lot of time where the crowd is sitting on their hands, and you gotta you gotta bust out the uh, SmackDown hair dryer crowd noise dot MP3. Yes. In uh, okay. In what world do Eo Sky and Lyra Valkyria need to wrestle one another for almost twenty minutes? When something on, <laughs> on Raw, <laughs> like when 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 a match like that with those two goes that long, it makes you think: somebody miss a flight? Did somebody get <laughs> ill? Is somebody injured? Like who missed the show? That right. they that and why are these that these poor these two poor women had to go out there and fill like at least fifteen more minutes than they probably <laughs> should have gotten based on the crowd's interest in the match. <laughs> Like, not that they couldn't theoretically have a great match. Again, it's just, it's not a crowd that cares if you have a great match. Right. So it's, yeah. You were asking a lot from two people that it's like, okay, EO was this women's champion, but even while she was the champion, she's part of this larger group. And Lyra is brand new and was just kind of put on TV as she is a woman from NXT and she wrestled Becky Lynch once. So... (laughs) Uh, yeah, you haven't necessarily given the crowd a ton of reason to invest in either woman recently, and yeah, like I said, it just it's one of those things that makes you think that something something must have gone wrong, or somebody missed a flight, or somebody got hurt, uh, or got pulled from the show last minute for some reason, and that's why it had to go so darn long. But uh, you know, God bless them, they tried. <laughs> so the King of the Ring finals are on this show. I'm going to be Gunther against the winner of Friday's highly anticipated Randy Orton versus Tamatonga match. Uh-huh. Um, do you have a read? Uh, I they just... would. They wouldn't dare put Tamatonga over Randy Orton, would they? I uh, I don't know. Maybe if he's going to be wrestling Roman Reigns this summer or <laughs> tagging with Roman Reigns this summer. Uh, my thought was like. And again, we've seen they're not afraid to book a DQ already. So you could also always do some could always do some chicanery <laughs> and have uh, and have Randy get counted out or disqualified or whatever. And uh, you know, I I also just can't envision a world where Randy Orton's going to willingly take chops from Gunther. So that's the other part of me that thinks that maybe they're going to backdoor Tamatanga into a win here somehow. Either way, the uh, finals of this match on Saturday, it's either going to be Gunther against Randy Orton or Gunther against Tamatanga. And both of those really just feel like uh, WWE Universe mode booking. (laughs) Absolutely. So, uh, as we talk about this here, um, I want to mention Randy Orton and and Carmelo Hayes on SmackDown. They had a... uh, (laughs) Carmelo was better in that match than he has been probably in any main roster match so far. I will give him that. I'm not a fan of Carmelo's in ring uh, as established on this program, but sure. um, there was one spot where uh, Carmelo chopped Randy in the back of the head. And, you know, the back of the head is not typically a place where you chop someone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, R- Randy, Randy got that old look in his eye and it was like, oh, there's there he is. There's the guy I know. (laughs) Unfortunately, I think they may have been uh, playing with the audience because uh, just just the camera shots uh, uh, immediately cutting to Randy's reaction to being chopped in the back of the head. And the fact that Randy didn't. um, He didn't commit a hate crime on national television immediately after he got chopped in the back of the head. Tells me that it was maybe planned, and um, they were playing into the audience's expectations of what to expect from Randy. But uh, uh, they did the cool springboard R- RKO finish, and uh, best main roster showing for Carmelo so far. But there was uh, 
There was a minute there where I thought, uh, there's Randy. There's the guy <laughs> I know. He'll find he'll find his way out eventually. He always does. <laughs> yeah, there's that. There is a triple threat for the Intercontinental title scheduled for this show. Sami Zayn versus Chad Gable versus Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed is big and he's Australian or from New Zealand. I'm not sure which. And uh, yeah, so he is Australian. Uh, So the uh, focus, almost all of the focus on this bill has been uh, Chad Gable and Sami Zayn, and then Chad Gable is bullying Otis, and uh, Otis is going to be ringside with Chad for the match, and I think it's probably just setting up Gable versus Otis, and then Sami Zayn and Bronson Reed will go off and have an Intercontinental title feud. Um, Yeah, but I don't know if Sami wins this or Bronson wins this or... What, but it just feels like this is a setup for Chad Gable and Otis Angle, which uh, feels kind of weird. <laughs> Any thoughts on the uh, the build to this Intercontinental title match? Well, this is an example of if the old guy was still in charge, uh, Chad would be winning this. Uh, and then taking the Intercontinental title to have a lower card comedy feud with Otis. Uh <laughs> As it stands, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's time for Sammy to lose the belt just yet, but uh, it also you also just had a guy that held the championship for 700 days or whatever, so he could always lose it here. It's not. It doesn't feel like Bronson Reed is particularly credible as like a big threat, uh, so having him just win the title and then have Sammy chase it and he can win it back down the line, you could always do that as well, so... Yeah, I don't know. They could, they could, uh, they could do that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like they, it felt like based off the turn that this was leading to another, like Gable versus, uh, versus Sammy match. And then they threw Bronson in there and then they've sort of sidetracked Gable with him berating all of his, all of his nerds that follow him around. So yeah, I guess that's, that's taken priority. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I would say I, I would think that Sammy would return. Um, he was very, very over the last time they were in Saudi Arabia. So I would imagine this is a, a feel good moment for him to, uh, to, uh, to win a match here. Becky Lynch defends the women's world championship against Liv Morgan. Hey, they're trying. They're, tr- they're trying. This feud uh, isn't lighting my world on fire. And, uh, one of the bigger Becky Lynch fans in the world. So uh, I can't imagine sliding anyone's world on fire. What do you think of this? Yeah, I just, I, and again, we all know this wasn't, this wasn't meant to be the plan. Uh, you know, nobody knew that Rhea was going to get hurt. Becky's not supposed to be the champion right now, but she has the air of a person who could take or leave being there every week at the moment to me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have already said my piece about Liv. I don't really think she's particularly good at anything uh, at the moment. So, um, yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know what to expect there. I think Becky's effort has still been there with a lot of her in ring over the last few months. So hopefully they have a good match. But it's also a Saudi show. And I wouldn't blame anyone for, you know, giving it the old house show effort either. And the other match announced for this show is Cody Rhodes versus Logan Paul in a match where only Cody Rhodes championship is up for grabs. So uh, Cody Rhodes, Logan Paul, Cody's wife just had surgery and Mm -hmm. he's on a plane to the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So uh, Cody and Logan Paul, are your expectations high for this? I think it could be, it could be really good. Uh, Logan Paul is is very athletic and does a lot of stuff. And uh, Cody really doesn't have bad matches. So, yeah, I would expect this will be good. Uh, and it's it feels I wish this had been built up a little bit more because as far as like real heels that feel like they have some actual like fire behind them, WWE is not 
tripping over them, tripping over, you know, credible heels at the moment. So it feels like maybe this could have been built up for a bigger show. But overall, yeah, I think this will be this will probably be this is going to be the best match on the show, I would think. Well, there you go. That's uh, King and Queen of the Ring, Ring, which is scheduled for this weekend. And WWE also announced this week that SummerSlam is going two nights, at least in 2026. Mm-hmm. Not even not even next year, two years from now. They've announced SummerSlam for Minneapolis two years from now. Um, SummerSlam going two nights. What do you think? I don't think we need any more two night wrestling shows personally in any company. But uh, look, we've established before that if you ask old St. Nick, are you willing to provide us with X, X hours of content or X days of content in exchange for money? He will always answer yes. So obviously Minneapolis was probably trying to get a WrestleMania. I know Nick Khan talked about not wanting to do a a cold weather WrestleMania after they were just in Philly. Uh, so he said, you can have SummerSlam. And they said, well, can that be two nights? And he said, sure it can. <laughs> if the price is right. And obviously the price was right. So yeah, I guess the most interesting thing will be, will it be two nights for the, ne- for the next two years as well? But um, also just because the fact that they're announcing it this far out is kind of fascinating to me. But uh, yeah, it's I I don't I don't want I don't want any more two night wrestling shows, but that's going to be an enticing offer for for especially WWE, who's going to get that offer everywhere and who's going to probably be able to fill the stadium both nights for for this. And if you think they aren't already thinking about doing it for the Royal Rumble and Survivor Series 2, you'd be crazy. Like these if the if the offers on the table and the money is right, all of these shows are going to be two nights eventually. Two nights of Royal Rumble doesn't bother me. Um really two nights any of these things being two nights uh doesn't bother me because I, I would rather spend uh, three hours each night watching wrestling than watching one s- five to six hour show. So that's what about just two four and a half hour shows. Like we got at WrestleMania <laughs> this year. Uh, yeah, not ideal. No, I think they were three and a half. I'm probably over exaggerating, but yeah, no, that's I, I ideally, I think that's probably, probably a fair, fair way to look at it. It's just, uh, it's just more. <laughs> yes. It's just more and more is not what I'm looking for, as we already discussed earlier from, from really any any wrestling company at the moment. Everyone operates as though their their product is the only product. Mm-hmm. And and that's fine, but no one has learned the lessons of of supply and demand. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. they just they just they just keep supplying. All right, uh, AEW Double or Nothing fifth anniversary show this weekend in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Show headlined by Swerve Strickland versus Christian Cage. They're billing this show as a as a as having a triple main event. And if you have three main events, do you really have any main events? Is my my question. But that's me being nitpicky. Uh, AEW World Champions for Australia called Defense Against Christian Cage. Uh, what do you think of the build to this? What do you think of the the billing of a triple main event for this this show? Um, as far as the billing, yeah, I mean, we all know. <laughs> we all know the score. And again, AEW is not the only company that does this sort of thing. But the last match is the main event. And, you know. And it's probably going to be anarchy, right? I would think. Um, yeah. I and I mean, if I were Christian and Swerve, I wouldn't want to go on <laughs> after that. And uh, so, yeah, I, I it doesn't matter. Like it's it's a way to try to make everybody feel important. I get it, but yeah, everybody knows. Everybody knows the score. The reason 
that Triple H insisted on going on last at WrestleMania 18, even though they had no business going on last. <laughs> even though years later he lied and said he didn't. He didn't, he didn't. insist on that. He didn't want to go on last. What? <laughs> I'm learning so much new WrestleMania 18 lore this week. Yeah. I think, I, well, again, I guess it's who you want to believe. Jericho was like, I didn't want to go on last. Triple H did. Triple H is like, yeah, me and Chris both didn't want to go on last. So, you know, pick your pick your guy who's known for stretching the truth and decide which one you think is less of a liar. But anyway, okay. anywho, there's only one real main event, to your point. Uh, but yes, the Swerve and Christian match. Uh, we've, we've talked about it a lot on the show the last couple of weeks. I think the beatdown they did where they bloodied Swerve and rubbed his the picture in his face playing off the angle they had done with him and uh and nick wayne uh, almost a year ago was very was good in a bubble but it was surrounded with swerve getting laid out by christian once before and also by brian cage and the uh, gates of agony so um kind of made him look like a door it felt like they realized that in the final week so they had him beat everybody up and leave Christian laying on the go home show, um, which doesn't necessarily make your challenger look super strong. But I mean, we, we talked about this last week. I don't think anybody is, has considered the, the even slightest possibility that Christian is, uh, is winning this belt. So uh, having him beat up swerve even more, probably it just hurts swerve and it doesn't really like, there's nothing, there's no way to elevate Christian beyond what he is at this point. So um, yeah, you probably should have just had swerve lay him out and then swerve should still just win here. For me, but why, why are you having the match? If everybody, if everybody knows the result ahead of time, why book the match? a question that has haunted wrestling for <laughs> for decades now it feels like. haven't haven't you done a bad job if if you if the audience thinks there's no way one of the two guys is winning the match yeah absolutely <laughs> it drives I, I, me insane. look here's the it's because brian danielson is booked in the main event and will osprey is booked against another guy and mjf's not back yet and like i mean they're, they're these are the reasons it's it's all some of it is injury. Some of it is they just booked the guys who would would have meant more in this spot in other stuff, which is their own fault. So it's yeah, it's it is a sign of, like I said, they're they're somewhat sna- snake bitten by injuries as far as having a lot of their tippy top guys, but they also uh, with the guys they have left, John Moxley's on the show. Brian Danielson's on the show. Will Ospreay's on the show. There's other guys you could have paired with them, and that would have meant more. But also, then you have to beat one of those guys and and put Swerve over that guy. And they clearly don't want to do that, at least this month. Uh, second part of this triple main event, Anarchy in the Arena. The Elite, Okada, Jack Perry, and the Young Bucks versus Team AEW. Isn't everyone Team AEW? Uh, Brian Danielson, Darby Allen, and FTR on the other side of this match. Uh, Darby Allen came out on Dynamite this week with a flamethrower. So he's got that going for him, which is nice. And uh, I assume someone's getting set on fire here on on Sunday. And um, uh, I don't care for anarchy in the arena or stadium stampede or any of these things. Um I saw enough hardcore matches with crowd brawling in the nineties to last me the rest of my life. So, um, uh, uh, just part of a wonderful variety show where someone will get set on fire with a flamethrower. Uh, cool. Now, what do you think of anarchy in the arena, the build, the flamethrower, someone getting set on fire, or the potential that someone gets set on fire, um, FTR and the young bucks, uh, in a uh, in a standoff over who will do a job, uh, all of these things. Well, FDR's won most of those standoffs, uh, uh, but yeah, I I think we we talked about this a little bit last week. 
the first anarchy in the arena kind of nobody expected or knew what to expect out of it. And it ended up being this fun, organic, wild thing, literally and figuratively, because uh, they played the song for 10 minutes. But uh, yeah, I, I think you're you're swimming upstream a little bit in that you're trying to recreate something that sort of organically fell into your laps. And with the, the match type, as opposed to just doing an eight man match or for whatever reason, they, they choose when to do the, the, their version of war games on television every year, instead of doing it on a pay-per-view, um, whatever, that's fine. But, uh, yeah, it, it, I, I don't, it's just a match you do every May now. And that's, I don't know, again, it feels like a match you should do. And to be fair, this, this feud, you have a heel faction, that's theoretically running roughshod over your show. And now the baby faces have risen to, to fight back. That's fine. That's a good, that's a good enough reason to have that, but it also just feels like, well, it's may and we do anarchy in the arena every may. It's the same thing that I complain about with WWE booking their war games or uh, how they use hell in a cell for all those years or money in the bank or any of those things. You don't do it because it's time to do it. You do it because, it's July or whatever. That's dumb. So yeah, I don't necessarily know that the, the match type is helping them, but uh, yeah, I don't know the feud overall. It's, it's, it feels like the most important thing on the show every week. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, I'm sure it'll be good. There's too many good workers in this match for it not to be at least fun and probably laid out in a fun way, but it's not something that I'm like champing at the bit to see either. Uh, do you think someone's getting set on fire? I mean, I wouldn't have a guy come out with a flamethrower if you're not, uh, you know, on the show before the pay-per-view, if you're not, <laughs> um, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know how you rig that up, but uh, yeah, I, I fire needs to be involved at some point. Either someone literally gets set on fire with the flamethrower or you use the flamethrower to light a table on fire and put somebody through it. But we've seen that kind of thing before, as opposed to literally lighting someone on fire with the flamethrower. That would actually that actually would be something new. So there's a chance for innovation here after all. The third match in the triple main event will Nightingale defending the TBS championship against Mercedes Monet. Doesn't seem like it's the right time to beat Willow. Doesn't seem like you should beat Mercedes on our first night in. So I assume Mercedes is winning this. Maybe going heel, full heel in doing so. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, they gave this the video package treatment on the go home dynamite. And then I think they shoot an angle on Rampage, which airs at 6 p.m. Eastern time this Friday. Um, where they actually do a physical angle between the two of them. But um, any thoughts on the uh, final build or lack thereof to uh, Mercedes and Willow? I mean, I thought the video package was a good idea just because I don't think you were going to top what you did on the uh, on the show the previous week. That, that promo with the contract signing yeah. was really good and felt like felt like that was your fever pitch point when when willow puts her to the table so doing anything after that probably wasn't going to increase uh uh excitement for the match in any way so yeah i, I was fine with them not with them not putting them on uh live on on tv um and yeah if you want to do a quick thing on rampage that's fine but i think yeah i think the the big build for this it's i think just doing the video package was probably a smart idea because you likely weren't going to top what you did the previous week. So um, as far as the finish, uh, yeah, I think Mercedes winning and I think she should win. Um, I don't think you brought her in with all that fanfare to beat her in her first match. Um, and we've talked about it. That stat turn has to happen somewhere. Uh, so if you don't want to turn Mercedes heel right away, I mean, she's kind of, we talked about it. They certainly are already playing with that. They're certainly already acknowledging the fact that she is the, the quote unquote outsider coming in to, uh, to wrestle an old favorite in AEW. So you can just 
go full heel with her if you want. She's very good at that. But if you want to kind of play her, play it a little fast and loose for a little while and see what the crowd does when she's not against someone like Willow and keep her baby face, then you could pull the trigger on the stat turn here and have her and Willow go off and feud and and move Mercedes into something with somebody else. I think that could happen, and I think we could uh, maybe see a little Britt Baker. Uh, Britt yes. Baker and Mercedes Monet here. That's just speculation on my I mean, part. A, a year ago, when people thought Mercedes <laughs> was coming in at that L.A. show, uh, Britt couldn't stop <laughs> dropping hints <laughs> about mercedes and we i don't think we ever really got word on whether or not they thought they had her and she didn't come in then or if that was brit shooting her own angle or what at that point but uh yeah that would be you would you would want some big splashes like you said this is the fifth year anniversary show even though they didn't really start talking about that until i feel like this week on television uh and yeah having an original comeback and who was almost inarguably their biggest women's star of the, their first five years come back and feud with the new, one of the new top stars in the division. Yeah. That sounds, uh, that sounds good. And sounds like something that would get people excited. The bang bang gang. Jay white and the guns will be wrestling death triangle, presumably in a uh, match for the, trios championship um that i think there's there's a stipulation match set for collision Mm -hmm. where if the guns lose to death to uh the lucha bros then the match on uh Sunday is a, a six man as it's for the United Unified Trios Championships. I this is all kind of bizarre to me because I'm like uh I watched the show and yet I have no no recollection of <laughs> I I rec I, I of, of this angle. Okay. So uh Death Triangle versus the uh, Bang Bang Gang. That sounds uh that sounds fine. Yeah, it'll be fun. Let's let's try to enjoy the you know eight or so weeks of the year that we get a healthy Ray Phoenix on our on our televisions. Let him do cool stuff, and uh, yeah, they'll have a good match. So same with Pack for that matter. Yeah, yeah. Although with Pack, you never know if it's like an injury or some other weird, like undisclosed issue that no one ever talks about. Yes. But yes, uh, we we've got both Ray and uh, and Pat Pack on the show at the same time. So uh, yeah, I think this will be a really fun party match. And and uh, yeah, good glad glad they're back again. It's five year anniversary show. Lucha Bros have been on been there since the beginning. We're at one point a very big part of the show every week, and have I feel like barely been seen in the past year. So. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad they're back. Um, wish, hopefully, we get to see more of them going forward after this show, and they don't disappear for another six months. Chris Jericho defends the FTW Championship against Hook and Katsuyori Shibata in a three-way. Um, uh, who asked for this? Chris Jericho. Awesome. I mean, that's the answer, right? <laughs> Yes, I don't know who's enjoying this. Uh, you know, look, we we've touched on it. This version of Jericho is the most entertaining he's been in like two years, but that's a very low bar. <laughs> oh yeah, um, no, no argument. So, I don't know. This just feels like they he's not gonna drop the belt back the hook yet. So Shabbat is there to eat a pin. That's what I would guess. <laughs> and what a indictment of this company that Cassiori <laughs> Shibati is the guy that's there to eat a pin in their company but mm. I think that's what he's there for 
I could easily cut this from this pay-per-view. Uh, Trent Bread versus Orange Cassidy, another match I could easily cut from this pay-per-view. Speaking of guys that either should have been defending AEW from the from the evil elites, yeah, or perhaps wrestling for the world title, uh, Orange Cassidy, and instead he is wrestling Trent, and we're going with the idea that he's uh, being wooed by Don Callis, which is stupid. It doesn't, I... make it, it doesn't make any sense. Well, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, so Orange is an idiot because obviously the, the obvious thing I would think here is that it's all a big swerve and he's, and Trent's going to go with Don, which who cares? That's fine. Right. But it kind of makes our, it, but if it gets to a point where like, you know, our, if if Orange gets outsmarted by Don and Trent at this show, it kind of makes him look like an idiot. Um, yes. I'm generally not a fan of making your top or near top baby faces in your company look like idiots. But feels like we're setting up Orange to look like an idiot. He, he's an idiot either way, because either he doesn't watch the show and he doesn't know that Don is a heel, <laughs> a completely irredeemable heel, and he's going to align with a heel, or he's going to get screwed by a heel. It, there's, there's No one comes out of this looking better. I also don't need this on pay-per-view. Okay. Uh, John Moxley versus Kinesuke Takeshita in a IWGP Eliminator match. Um, Moxley came out on Dynamite and uh, laid out Takeshita uh, without breaking a sweat and walked off while his music played. Uh, if John is not doing a job on Sunday, chances are John's not doing a job on Sunday. <laughs> Boy, did Takeshita look like a geek. Yeah. Uh, there, you know, there was an interview Takeshita did this past week that made like minor waves about how he's like, you know, I saw that everybody tells me I'm doing a great job, but I don't seem to be getting any higher on the card. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I can imagine that's really frustrating for him. And, and he was trying to make a larger point about how like, well, the language barrier and my it's hard for me to get my personality across when I don't speak the language, which I kind of disagree because I think guy has a lot of charisma and personality, even speaking limited English, but um, it also doesn't help that. And again, I know there was some injury stuff late last year that maybe derailed him right after he beat Kenny twice in a week. And then they did nothing with him for four months. But right. as they're pointing out on the show, they did like a little video package. Like he beat Jericho and then did nothing with it. They they had him just like run through Darby in like a really entertaining squash. And it's like, but then he just disappears for a month. So it's like, yeah, some of it is maybe it's more difficult for him to connect with the American audiences. Maybe that's a part of it. But a lot of it is just that they put the guy on TV. He does a lot of cool stuff. And then he's off TV for a while or he gets on TV and he loses. <laughs> like that's, that's kind of the issue. I was like, I appreciate him like not wanting to throw anybody under the bus or be like, the problem is I'm not being booked well. Right. But problem is he's not being booked well or booked consistently at the very least. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, the thing I don't understand about any of any, you could pretty much put, I guess with the exception of the top two, okay, two thirds of the main, of the triple main event and the Jericho thing. You know, Jericho is going to get his stuff in on every show. Mm -hmm. Um, and it seems like Adam and Malachi have gotten their stuff in on every show. Uh, I guess that's. I was about to make an unfair criticism and say that half of the matches on the show are are booked so scattershot but it, actually they've been pretty consistent 
um, this go around with keeping everyone on TV as they build for it. But I think, yes, quite often guys win and then they disappear off TV for a month. Hey, did you know Scorpio Sky's coming back? Oh, that's wonderful. Where's this like, like comeback number four in the last like eight months for him? Yeah, there was a vignette on uh, Collision this weekend for him, this past weekend for him, and uh, surely this is this is the push that will take. Sure, Scorp- Scorpio Sky as the single star. Yeah, this is it's totally going to work this time. There's just yeah. certain guys that the the Tony Tony will always give another chance to, and look every again, not different than any other Booker across wrestling history in that way. But boy, he he really wants Scorpio Sky to be to be a guy who's on the show. And again, not that I don't think Scorpio Sky has talent or doesn't have a place on somebody's wrestling show. Uh, but with the roster you got, I don't I don't know where he fits in unless he's one of eight guys in a faction again. Right. So just looking at this pay-per-view card, okay, you got Roderick Strong, Will Ospreay, Adam Copeland, Malachi Black, Moxley, Takeshita, Trent Orange, Jericho Hook Shibata, Bang Bang Gang, Death Triangle, The Elite, Brian, Darby, FTR, Swerve and Cage. Of all those dudes, I could say, well, maybe I would push Scorpio Sky ahead of Trent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And depending on the week, maybe, maybe Takeshita or maybe Roddy Strong. But there's like 18 other guys on this on this show alone that I would put <laughs> I would push. I mean, maybe over Hooker Shibata, maybe. And I'm being generous. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I think. um Guy's like forty two. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, not. He doesn't look it, but it's like, and he's young in TV TV time because he spent most of the last five years injured. Yeah, but yeah, at some point, it's, just, it's like you know, this just isn't going to work out here, Scorpio. So uh, we wish you the best and good luck. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, isn't that <laughs> theoretically? And I know this is probably not what guys want to hear. I mean, Ethan Page's deal just apparently lapsed and he left and yeah like isn't that what roh is for though (laughs) yes send that guy to work with you know whoever you've got that's young that you think might be something in a couple of years or to just have you know to fulfill the quota of matches for your ring of honor show every week isn't that where scorpio kind of would be slotted right now yeah maybe that's you know what maybe that's the where he ends up good for him you know you you need an roh tv champion okay cool yeah sure you, you can go feud with kyle fletcher all right cool all right uh, um uh, a few matches left to preview here on this uh, double nothing i show your guy the rated r superstar adam copeland your man he is wrestling malachi black in a barbed wire steel cage match for the tnt championship uh barbed wire steel cage it's gonna be blood and uh, and uh, Brood Edge returned on Dynamite this week and dumped blood on Malachi Black, one of Vince Russo's favorite angles across every promotion he ever worked in. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, what do you think of what do you think of the build here for your guy, the rated R superstar Adam Copeland, taking uh, on Malachi Black? You will be shocked to learn that I have not enjoyed it. Um, what? Yeah, I think this stuff sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and the matches aren't good. So, um, you know, I can forgive a lot if if I get good wrestling at the end of it, but I don't when Adam's involved for the most part. Um, so, yeah, that's the problem. Uh, and Malachi, I, I would just like to point out, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'd like to point out that Malachi stole Adam's wedding ring. Mm-hmm. And if uh, if Malachi wins, Adam Copeland will have to bend the knee to the House of Black. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, the stakes have never been higher, clearly. <laughs> uh, boy, yeah, this is, uh, this is not lighting my world on fire. 
it was kind of funny when they dropped strawberry preserve all over <laughs> uh some real chunky blood <laughs> that they dropped on uh on on malachi on dynamite this week and i also think it was funny because the stream like he to his credit he was like i'm gonna get this everywhere like i'm gonna get it all over me so he kind of yes. like bumps into where it's falling and then very quickly i think because it was coming down at a very rapid rate and he didn't realize that like he kind of like takes a back bump into it and then like waterboards himself so he has to very quickly get out of the <laughs> way of it so he like flips over to his stomach and sp- like climb or crawls out of the way of where, where it's directly falling um yes so you know he gave it his all for this terrible terrible angle that's uh, always dumb in every company that's done it um but yeah no i don't i don't know i i kind of like the weird little kickboxing match that he and kyle o'reilly had on uh on dynamite but uh this feud this match uh i don't know i hope it's short it won't be but i can hope they decided for whatever reason that uh, Kyle O'Reilly is everybody's TV uh, job guy for this <laughs> for this pay per view cycle. Which look, I'm mm-hmm. not the biggest Kyle. I, I think Kyle O'Reilly is one of the nicer guys in wrestling. Uh, his his wrestling characters never clicked with me, but, and so I'm fine if they want to beat him like a pinata for a month. <laughs> but but he's, boy, he's, have they beat him like a pinata for a month? He's at like yeah. Well, he came back after like over a year out. They yes. put him right into the feud with Roddy. Which, yes. if there's a feud that's going to make you care about Kyle O'Reilly, it's that. Yeah. And they beat him immediately. Yeah. And then, yeah, now he's he's Adam's little buddy. And he lost to Adam in a babyface <laughs> match. And then lost to, lost to Ma- uh, Malachi because he's Adam's little buddy. So, yeah, that's his, that's his current lot in life. Uh, you know, I would maybe, if I were Kyle, I would maybe find myself a tag team partner or something uh maybe yeah try to get in somebody's group because uh yeah otherwise this is probably your as we know and look if you if your goal is to just be on television a lot then you actually should offer yourself up to be one of the job guys because it's like who wrestles more on this show in the last month than shane taylor (laughs) (laughs) shane taylor's on every goddamn show he loses on every show but he's on all the shows (laughs) Because yeah. he's one of the six guys in that locker room that will do the job. <laughs> so, you know, there's, you know, if you just want a consistent place on TV and, you know, maybe you get a win or two on Rampage there, you know, <laughs> here and there, and then you you lose on all the big shows. That's, I mean, there are worse roles to have in, in, in professional wrestling, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of your, uh, your lot in life if you're Kyle right now, if you stay in the current position. There's six guys in the company that'll do jobs. Let's see if we can name them. Shane Taylor, <laughs> as you pointed out. Mm-hmm. Kyle O'Reilly apparently has no problem doing mm-hmm. them. Uh, Brian Cage. Brian Cage. Uh, Jay Lethal. Yeah. Although he hasn't been around much. Yeah. Jay Lethal is a guy who will, who will get beat uh, and not complain about it. Uh, did I mention Brian Keith already? Um nope. That's number five. And... Um, I don't know. Even the uh, the the Kingdom Boys, uh, Mike <laughs> Mike and uh, Matt, uh, they don't they don't do no jobs. They should be doing jobs, and they don't do no yeah. jobs. We well, got to protect um, the prestigious ROH <laughs> tag titles, obviously. Um, yeah, I don't really know. We got uh, five guys who do jobs. Probably one of the other guy, Lee Moriarty. <laughs> yes, Shane Taylor's tag partner. Yep, um, he's a guy who who will do a job for you. And then uh, the other, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, Lee John Lee Johnson, Is that a guy, <laughs> Big Shotty. Oh yeah, Big Shotty Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Shotty Lee. He's uh, yeah, he'll do a job here and there, and uh, he's with um, no, that's uh, Sean Dean and Carly Bravo or the Infantry. Mm-hmm. And they're they're, they're uh, tag team guys that'll do jobs. But as far as tag team guys that'll do jobs too, it's it's the infantry, and it's uh, the uh, bear guys, and mm-hmm. it's the outrunners, Turbo Floyd and Truth Magnum, mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. are aren't even signed there. <laughs> That's right. 
and you got the the six man job guys are Lance Archer and the Righteous. Yep. And also Brian Cage again with the <laughs> with the Gates, the Gates of Agony. Yeah. Yeah, those are your Funny. those are your guys who do jobs. It's like Funny. I said, Funny. it's one way to get on TV a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, All right. A uh, couple more matches preview here for uh, the pay per view Sunday. Timeless Tony Storm defending the Women's World Championship against Serena Deeb. They decided to go uh, full heel with Serena for this feud. I don't know who could possibly cheer Serena against Timeless Tony. They've also gone in a weird, um, it feels almost late 90s WWF, uh, the stuff that they're having t- Tony do, like having her strip behind a flag on. <laughs> Collision mm-hmm. or Rampage or whatever show that was, and then teasing it again on Dynamite, and then teasing it and then having Serena take it away. Like it's this is this is really weird stuff that is not making me feel comfortable. But uh, Timeless versus Serena, I don't think anyone believes Serena is becoming the women's world champion. Do you? No, not at all, and she shouldn't be. Uh, yeah, I don't know, like. I don't know what what you do with Serena after this, <laughs> but uh, no, I don't think. Uh, may- maybe if she had started as the heel, and that had been the thing the whole time, maybe that would have made for a more interesting program. But so far, it's mostly been uninteresting. Uh, so yeah, uh, I I don't know. It's just it is something for Tony to do until. Again, maybe somebody else is coming back, like a Jamie Hader or somebody. Um, you are, or maybe, I mean, maybe they're closer to pulling the trigger on the Mariah May turn than we think they are. But uh, yeah, you're kind of running out of people for Tony to beat. It feels like so. Uh, other than if if people are coming back from injury soon, so uh, yeah, we'll we'll see what they do afterwards. I guess. Uh, Roderick Strong defending the international championship against Will Ospreay um, as a pro wrestling match. I'm sure this will be uh, very, very good. Um, will um, might be in a class of his own. Well, like I'm not, I don't uh, fillet him the way that uh, some of the wrestling media do, but it's hard to come up with a guy who consistently has better matches and like, I don't know, would you argue Danielson is better than Osprey at this point or that they're in the, those two are in their own class. I, I, I don't know. It's just uh, the matches that Osprey has on TV every week are insane. And yeah. then on pay-per-view, I'm sure he's going to go out there and try to kill himself. Yeah. I mean, his, his, AEW pay-per-view track record is pretty darn strong right now with the Takeshita match and the Danielson match. So, um, yeah, and he's if there is a guy in AEW right now that feels like a star on the rise, it's him. Like it feels like there is more life. The crowd comes alive for him in a way that they are not for a lot of these other angles we've just been talking about. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, he is doing a lot of things right. A lot of that comes down to, again, we've we've talked about it. Surprisingly, has cut pretty good promos while he's been while he's been on these shows, and also yep. he's having really good wrestling matches, and in some cases, great, incredible wrestling matches, uh, very consistently. So, is that a pace he can keep up? He's getting older now. <laughs> Who knows? But right now, he feels like the you know the one of if not the biggest star in the company and one of the only things that feels like it's really clicking right now is whenever he's on screen so uh yeah i think this will be a good match we've already kind of touched on it in the last few weeks i think he should win this belt and then go unify it with one of the other seven singles belts they have uh for uh for the men at the moment so that's fine if that's what they do in the meantime, it does feel like a little bit of a waste to have him go from the dream match with Danielson and winning that match to uh, wrestling Roddy Strong for the 
uh, the international title, which I will remind you was leveled up thanks to Shazam 2 Fury of the Gods. <laughs> <laughs> the explanation of that never made any sense, and no one ever really held Tony Khan's feet to the fire on that either. No. <laughs> Wait, what? What does Shazam to Fury of the Gods have to do with this? Well, it's leveling up the All Atlantic Championship into the International Championship. What? What? <laughs> All right, cool. Shazam doesn't like. He's not a video like it doesn't. He doesn't level up. He he says a magic word and he transforms transforms from a boy into a big man, but he's not. That's not what's what? happening. The belt isn't getting bigger. <laughs> They're just changing its name. Yeah, none of that. Yeah, none of that makes made any sense. Um, I guess Fightful had a report this week speculating that uh, MJF could be back uh, here soonish, and uh, it seems like before a pay per view, they just report uh, everything. They report uh, any possibility of anything that could happen. And uh, that way they're covered. <laughs> sure. If uh, if MJF comes back here on Sunday, or if MJF comes up on uh, uh, before Forbidden, the TV building up to Forbidden Door, uh, you know, they they're covered. Uh, I I don't know. Uh, but MJF's been off for quite some time now, and uh, and may or may not have gotten surgery, and may or not may or may not be ready to come back. Uh, nobody really knows, but there was a report this week that he could be back soon. Uh, any thoughts? I mean, my thought would be if if he is ready to come back again, having him come back on the fifth anniversary show would make sense. Um, I suppose you could also announce he is coming back and not have him appear on TV and just build to him having a match at the next pay-per-view or whatever. Um, you could do that as well and see if you can drive a number that way to that show. But also that's the Forbidden Door show, which is already kind of going to sell itself just based on the people that buy that show are going to buy it for the, you know, the crossover stuff and the, and the, the dream matches and all that that they put together. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, if he was going to come back, the big anniversary show would would seem to make sense as a place for him to come back. But, uh, you know, you could also see him holding out until it's time to start building that Wembley show. And also feels like when he, his coming back needs to be contingent on when Adam Cole's going to be back, which we saw at the last pay-per-view Adam Cole was able to walk around without uh, any apparent pain, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's ready to run and take bumps yet. So it doesn't really make sense. I I would think to bring MJF back before Adam Cole is also back, but we'll see. Forbidden door is uh, on long Island too, which is worth, uh, okay. worth, worth noting. So they, uh, they like to bring up MJF's long Island connection all the time. Sure. All right, um, two pay per view weekend, holiday weekend. Uh, anything else you'd like to discuss? No, I think that about covers it. All right, enjoy all of the wrestling this weekend, everyone. Enjoy your long holiday weekend if you're in the U.S. And until next time, I'm Ethan and I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. You know, sitcoms don't do Memorial Day episodes, do they? <laughs> no, no why would... Memorial Day. Not a whole lot of com- it's not know, a whole you... lot of comedy to be mined in Memorial Day, oh, is well, there? Like, fray, fray, like, I don't know, manning a grill, you're setting things on fire, there's something there. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a fair point. Uh, Cooking mishap. Think...
Yeah, a problem maybe is that uh, with the you know the the golden age of the sitcom, they would maybe kind of allude to the fact that whatever time of year the episode was airing is whatever time of year it was on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, the season finale would air like the third week of May. OK, usually because they were on the, uh, you know, they would debut in early to mid September and they'd finish up their uh, their season in uh, mid May. And that would be okay. it. That but, makes sense. Uh, now everybody kind of pro- everybody kind of programs year round now. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's that's less that's re- less relevant. But there you go. I don't know. Season yeah. two of Frasier has uh, begun shooting. Okay. And uh, Ra- Roz from the original series is uh, back in a recurring role. Oh, wow. Uh, the, this season. So she did a guest spot in uh, season one. And then she's back uh, as a recurring guest star here in season two. So okay. I still have not watched <laughs> anything beyond episode one of the of the reboot. But um uh, It'll be there waiting for me at some point until Paramount Plus goes out of business. Of course. Yeah. Until one of the other ones swallows it up. But hey, they're going to bundle them. Disney cool. and HBO are going to bundle them. And and then we have cable, but worse. And also none of the actors get paid for residuals anymore. So, I don't know what we're doing, man. Why did everybody run? Why did everybody run to streaming five years before? Anyone was ready to run to streaming. I don't. I don't, I don't get it. it's, it's free real estate. <laughs> uh, same reason that all these uh, tech companies are running in on AI powered things right now, even though the technology is almost unusable at the moment. Yeah, even though if you like Google's AI says like a dog played in the NBA. Yes, <laughs> or you see that that if you need to. Uh, you know, if you want your cheese to stick to your piece uh, to your pizza better, you could mix in one eighth cups of non toxic glue. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Like uh, that suggestion came from the the pizza glue came from. Uh, they like tracked down came from a, an eleven year old Reddit user with a uh, some kind of vulgar screen name. <laughs> um. uh, but yeah, that is a great. Yeah, it's just. You have yeah. trained these AIs to work using Twitter and Reddit and <laughs> all of the worst places, worst and dumbest places on the internet. What could go wrong? Yeah, it's great. Um, Jorge Mateo just hit one of the longest home runs I've ever seen in my life. Oh, well, that's good news. A three-run homer. Well, that's wonderful news. You know, I was uh, I was listening. I listened to the Locked On Orioles podcast now. I don't sure. like it, but I listen to it every day. Orioles um, content. But... Yeah. That, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I don't like it. I don't like the guy's voice. But okay. um, he did an episode this week that was all about how the Orioles, it's not a lack of plate discipline, why they're swinging so much and not walking. Like it's a concerted effort. And if you look at Gunner and Adley and Ryan O'Hearn and a few of the other guys, it's working. And they're top five in all these offensive categories. And they're like their first pitch swinging batting average and slugging percentage is very high. They're not they're not striking out that much, despite how much they're swinging. Right. So there's like all these reasons where you can go. Yes, it is a specifically different approach. Yes. All these guys were walking less and they all probably need to walk a little bit more than they are. But yeah. some of this is also like a concerted effort that has resulted in them leading the league in home runs and, you know, and Adley Rutschman dropping his on base percentage, but increasing his slugging and batting average and total bases numbers and all that stuff. So, like, I won't pretend I completely understand all of the advanced stat stuff, but the way it was broken down, I was like, okay, that that makes sense. It's just tough when you then watch like that St. Louis series and, you just see them hacking at everything and scoring two runs and two runs a game. Like that's where this, this is going to be a test of uh, a test of everyone's patience, I guess. <laughs> right. Yeah. They, um, I saw the earlier, some, at some point tonight I was telecast. I saw that they, um, 
they're like I don't know. As far as scoring runs in in May, they're very they're very low. Like they scored the most runs of anybody in April, mm-hmm. and then they're pretty low in May. They're still fifth in the major league in runs scored. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, they're still as of uh, entering entering Friday or entering Thursday, they are still on pace to win ninety nine point nine games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's insane, despite all the flaws that are, are clearly evident. Mm-hmm. They need, they need, preferably a right-handed back end of the bullpen arm and a left-handed back end of the bullpen arm. But um, they need two bullpen arms. Uh, we just lost uh, a starter to a very troubling forearm <laughs> strain, which is usually a precursor to. Uh, an an elbow ligament tear, um, yeah, just a lot of, lot of lot of flaws. Uh, still on pace to win a hundred games. Yeah. <laughs> also, still three games behind the Yankees, who apparently are really really good this year. I try to keep on keeping on. <laughs>